Coach Askew, uh, who, uh, Mr. Askew, who uh, helped us up in our home state of Ohio and, and some uh, went other places too. Uh, uh, Tony Pierce, who did a great job uh, out there in Atlanta and, uh, and, uh, and uh, up north in Georgia uh, and up in Augusta. And then we want to uh, uh Coach Cordell, uh, who uh, helped us in uh, Atlanta also. Uh, you know, our, our recruiting class is a wide range of uh, players. We, uh, I think we did a thing and we had eight kids from Georgia that we really looked at. We had uh, seven kids from, uh, we had seven from Florida, uh, and we went seven from Florida. I think we had five from Ohio. We had one from Virginia, one from, uh, from, from some uh, New Jersey, so, so on and so forth. We had people, one from Alabama. We had numerous all-state players. We had numerous all-state players. And whenever we were, probably our smallest player that we signed was a super Alabama. He was a super Alabama player. And uh, Justin Purdue uh, had well over 2,400 yards in uh, offense. I mean, not, I say in offense, but in total yardage. Uh, so he was a super, not only first team all-state, but a to, uh, super Alabama. We had uh, like I said, many all-state football players. We had all-state Ohio players, all-state Virginia. Uh, I think we even had, I mean, we had all-state Florida. So we, we were getting it done. We were moving. We really felt like uh, we could do some things here. We had to sell them on our vision. Our record was not the greatest, as you guys know. And we know that we're building a program. We want people to understand that. We were trying to, uh, you know, we were asked, why would people want to come to an 0-12 team? Number one is BCS. We play a BCS game. If you're a real football player, you want to play that BCS schedule. Okay? And so when we go out and recruit, we're recruiting a young man that want a great classroom setting and get really continue to get his degree. And at the same time, want to be on an upstart of a program that's going to beat BCS teams and be uh, competing high in SCS football. And that's what we've done. We play nothing but the best group of uh, teams. We're one of the few, I say, FCS schools that will play BCS schools. And when, if you're going to keep playing them, then you better start talking to, and I would like the media to start talking to people about going and coming and playing at Savannah State. Because we rightfully deserve that. Because number one, this is all about education. It's all about education. And I think that some people are getting caught up on the, the SECs and the Big Tens and et cetera, et cetera, and they forget about the young man and his education and get his degree. Well, we're not sacrificing that here. It may have been done in the past, but we definitely changed that. We're changing that. We can see that in my first recruiting class last year, out of, out of here first semester, out of 19 people that had a 3.0 or better, 13 of them were my, our recruits or from our recruiting class. So our attitude is changing when it comes to the APR. It's changing when it comes to academics. We fully intend to get our young men that decide to attend Savannah State University their education. Next, we want, like I said, I just don't want to go play those games. I want to win those games. And I know it's going to take some time, but at the same time, you can build it. If people are willing to be patient from uh, the alumni to administration, uh, you can build these programs. But the problem is, a lot of times people don't give you a chance to build the program. And right now, we feel like what we've done this last two recruiting classes, this one and the one this year, we can build this program to be something special. And we can build it where we can play and compete against people and have that opportunity in the fourth quarter to win. It's going to take some time because you know, and I know, in 20 years of losing, I just say, it's just, you just don't change something overnight. And you don't always change the image. But it's going to get done here, and we're, we're making great strides. The recruiting class made great strides. The coaches made great strides. Uh, and so that's what we're doing. Uh, just to talk to you real quick about some of the young men. Uh, and I say with the local flair, flavor, William Campbell heads it up. We continue to recruit the, uh, the empire. The, uh, and uh, if it wasn't for Georgia Tech coming in, taking one, and, we, and the other kid went to Boston College. And we, I want to acknowledge all those young men that did get signed here in the, uh, in, uh, in, the, 
empire here. I want to just say congratulations. Education is more important than anything, and I would wish you would have probably came to my school. But at the same time, my main thing is to get our young men in the uh, empire a, the, and in education, and that's what it's all about. But just uh, talking about the kids in our empire right now, you know, we have William Campbell, who, out of playing the Bible Baptist, he had 161 carries for 1,569 yards, was great on the offensive side of the ball, did a great job on defense, so we're going to play him at defensive back. That's our main guy, and I, and I was an area. Uh, and like I already addressed, a young man from out of Alabama who's done well. We had some other great ones in the state of Georgia who usually for the most part, we stayed home in the state of Georgia when we got the linemen, the offensive linemen, and defensive linemen. Uh, and they, they're going to be outstanding. We also went down to Florida, like I said. We knew that we had to address some of the concerns, like team speed. And we got, went down to Florida, and we were fortunate enough to get, get some team speed dressed out of local uh, Jacksonville, which is within two hours of work, where you were able to get a great quarterback who threw almost for 2,500 yards out of him. Uh, just 40 minutes outside of Jacksonville. And then we uh, was able to use some of our alumni, uh, Coach Wiggins over at uh, Seminole High School, and uh, Britt Henderson to uh, be able to deliver some defense alignment in a 6-6 offensive tackle. So we're real excited about that. Like I said, I'm originally from Ohio. Coach Askew's from Ohio. He just happened to be at home, and people started calling me at, down here. and. Uh, we took advantage of that and were able to uh, see some kids and have them come down here and look at the great state of Georgia. And uh, we had five of them commit that way. So we're real excited. We feel like that we have some potential kids that hopefully will be just like on the Super Bowl and uh, having our kids, uh, like the young man from West Alabama, intercepted that ball one of these days uh, and uh, put Savannah State back on the map, just like Shannon Sharp and some other players did. So we're real excited about it. We're making the right moves. We got size. We got strength. We got uh, football and we are inte football intelligence. Uh, intelligence improved, and we're looking forward to having to continue to work towards having a big season. And that's all I have to say. All right. At this time, we'll open it up for questions for Coach Wilson. Coach, you got um, heavy in Columbus, Ohio. I know it's three from one high school. Beechcroft High School? How'd that go about? Package deal or anything? Bringing three kids in from one school? No, you know, uh, all three of those kids were all state Ohio. They were all state Ohio. That's number one. They had winning ways. I'm looking for players that win. They were 11 and 2, the loss of the state semifinals. Uh, just happened that uh, I was sitting at, I was actually sitting here in my office, and the internet's changing everything. We know that by if you're watching today's signing day. ESPN and everything else. Uh, internet's changing. Football, everything's local, even though it might be 2,000 miles away. And so when I saw those kids, I, like I said, I, I picked up the phone, called Coach Askew, and said, do you know anything about these kids? And uh, called up your coaches and talked to them and said, hey, I'm interested in going down south. I'm from that area. And uh, started talking to kids that came down to visit, and they loved it. And they, and you know what's neat about the South is everything from up north. Most African Americans originated from down south. And so they had family here. So it was either it was an easy sell once they came down and knew that their parents would I mean their family would be coming all over to support them in the state of Coach, do you see one or two of these players uh, maybe contributing early next year? I think that when we recruited, I asked our players, I mean our coaches do do two things. Number one, can they win the MEAC? I don't want players that just come play football. You know, last year we, we, we felt like we had kids in that could win the MEAC. Eight to ten of our football, or eight to ten freshmen played on one side of the ball at a time. Okay? And like, you know, people walked away. I know you're on the right track, even though you're upset after the game because you may be lost. You know you're on the right track when eight to ten freshmen are playing on each side of the ball. Every day, I mean, every game, and people say, you maybe could have won that game. Not you got crushed or whatever. Hey, we, we had chances to win that game. Now, these are freshman class. And when we went to war, uh, war, I'm talking about recruiting, uh, we went to go find guys that can play against not my attitudes. I got to be, beat these BCS teams. I don't prepare each week or each day not to beat these guys. 
you know. If we're going to do that, then we might as well not even practice and just show up on Saturday. Uh, at the same time in the media, you know, four out of five teams that we play uh, finished number one in the conference. And one of them is North Carolina Central. We had 14 to 7 at halftime. North Carolina A&T was 10 to nothing at halftime. Uh, South Carolina State, uh, South Carolina State, it was, uh, they, they scored big, but 42 points, uh, 49 points of that, 59 points came off, two interceptions for touchdowns and, and some blunders off special teams. And then uh, I'm trying to think of who the next one was, but you can tell it kind of hunts me at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we can win these games. And I think that when we looked at our players to recruit, we said, hey, we want to beat these guys. It's uh, the MEAC teams. We want to beat everybody else. And we just got to uh, continue to get good athletes. You know, I know my coaches know Division One athletes. And that's what they did. What was your biggest hurdle, your biggest obstacle when you go into these kids' houses and talk to them? Really nothing. I mean, if you're selling, which I, you know, what I always tell a young man to do is, number one, look at the school for its education. If you're not looking at the school for education and you're too busy looking at a Nike contract or we're looking at it, and I'm sorry about that because I know we got a Nike shoe contract, but... Uh, when you're looking at a Nike contract or you're looking at some, uh, some facility that's just abnormal and you're forgetting about your education and mother's worrying about what her baby looks like on TV, then nine times out of ten, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good going her way. So we ask our kids to look at it that way. Next, the uh, sec second thing I look at is social set. I tell them to look at the social set of the school. Do they feel comfortable talking to their teachers? Do they feel comfortable? dealing with the, pop, the, the student body population, why not? If you do those two things, then you're really looking for a college. When, I, when they left out of my office, and one thing I have my coaches doing is trying to get into the, uh, I want to continue to improve the academics here, uh, our team academics. I ask my coaches to go into the parents' home. The parents' homes are just not for trying to sell the kid to come to your school, but I want to know how, what type of uh, uh, environment that kid was in that young man was in. I wanted to find out what type of person he was because that's going to be a great addition to our university. He's going to be an ambassador at our university. So with all that sent in, it doesn't take much selling because now you're getting the right fit for your university. Then finally I look for Adam and tell him to look at the football program. And they can see when I'm expressing my vision, when I'm expressing the way uh, we want to win too, I think that the young man, as the, the 25 young men, he was on 6.2, the 25 or 27 young men that signed with us uh, believe in what we're doing. Any more questions for Coach Wilson? Coach, please describe uh, for, for everyone in here your vision. You talked about it several times. <coughs> uh, we, we know that you had to use that vision to sell uh, these uh, wonderful student athletes. Elaborate a little bit on your vision for your program. Okay, my, my vision is this. I have two real main visions. So, you know, I came here, I knew that we were going to have to build. I knew that I had to evaluate and to do things and to understand how the school is run, how, how uh, what, what's all, what it's all about, about our young people. Well, now, number one, my vision is, is very simple. I really want to, number one, give young men a chance to graduate. I'm going to give them an opportunity to go to school, give them a chance to graduate. And I believe in 100% graduation rate. You know, we can make ourselves the Stanford of the South. We do make it the Stanford of the South. But that's what we're aiming for. Number two, we got to, uh, we can make a, a school, a building a school with the great coaching we have and recruiting to make this place a national champion. And so I, my attitude is I want to make this a national championship. That championship team, I want to make it, a, I know, I understand that we got to start slow and, and do all that other stuff but, and put all the, and I feel like we scratched it. With these two recruiting classes, I feel like we got to the surface before I felt like we were underneath the surface and we were fighting. But I feel like we got up to the surface. And so next, uh, I think we can start uh, with two recruiting classes in here, even though they're young. Uh, they're not really many done with junior college kids or none. We could get to that next level and start getting, when I say next level, getting wins underneath your belt. Kids are more focused, our young men are more focused, they're going to class and doing everything that we need to do, lifting weights and whatnot. And we even had a situation, a, a 
with which our players were working out, people thought we had started spring practice. And we said, no, that's the dedication that our young men are having. So that's our focus. And uh, most of all, I do want to give them enjoyment. They, they have an enjoyment in their experience here at Savannah State University. So when they walk away, I, I, I always have my athletic director say, so we can get those alumni dollars. <laughs> but uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that they enjoy what they, what they experienced here at, at Savannah State. You, you talk about spring practice. When is spring practice? Uh, as of right now, APR, we're not having spring practice. 